Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Alvarez. This is Laura Galindo, and we are the directors of Last Place. We are going to break down the creative process behind the video, uh, where it came from, everything that happened during and after the shoot. Uh, and if you enjoy this, we invite you to take a look at our Patreon, where you can get more of an in-depth look at all our projects, get exclusive access to our videos, breakdowns, and art from our community members uh, that we don't share anywhere else. So thank you for being here. And thank you for being here, Miss Galindo. It is a <laughs> pleasure. <welcome. laughs> uh, first question I'd like to ask you is, where did Last Place come from? Who hurt you? <laughs> well, I wrote Last Place um, in 2020, in October of 2020. Um, it was after a just sort of funny little complicated thing I, I was involved in. Um, where, I mean, I felt the way that Last Place sort of reflects. And um, one night I was just trying to figure out what to do with all the feeling. And so I, I wrote the song. And, um, and that very night I sent it to the, to the person it was about. Um, to, to no fanfare. Um, um, but that's all right. Um, it really is. And ultimately the song was just sort of, um, I guess, really my gift to myself. Um, for, you know, feeling that way and, and acknowledging that feeling and, um, and yeah, so that that's that's who hurt me. It was just someone, but ultimately, like the hurt was obviously worth it. I would say so too because making this video um, and you bringing the whole team together for this and the experience we had in Maine was without a doubt one of the most beautiful experiences that I've had so far, like on this project full journey. So I want to say thank you to you and thank you to your ex for breaking your heart because they, they did a, a damn good job. I would not call them my ex, but, <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I agree that um, it was fully worth it. Just reminds me what, what all this feeling is for is to, to do something with it and to create community. Are you down to talk to uh, fellow Project Field member and the costume and set designer Sarah Elizabeth about the pre-production process of video. Yeah, I'm pretty down. Awesome, cool. All right, well, here we go. Hi, I'm Sarah Elizabeth, and I am the costume slash set designer of Last Place. Sorry, Laura. Sarah. What was your inspiration, I guess, for the music video in each character? Well, for the music video in general, I mean, I think it was like two or three days after I had written the song. Um, I was just listening to it, you know, in my room. And oftentimes after I write a song, it, I feel like visuals come to me really soon after. It's almost how I, almost in the same way that, you know, when a musician is developing a song, like production wise, like the... I'm getting ideas for producing at the same time that I'm getting ideas for visuals um, after I write a song. Um, and I felt that this this metaphor of last place of, of a race um, had every, like, it seemed natural to literalize, you know, the the metaphor and um, and something about races and something about competition mm -hmm. evokes, like, almost like a high school like nostalgia because you don't do a lot of like races or competitions as like a grown adult or i mean maybe some I'm, obviously <laughs> there's marathons and like yeah. i just don't do that you know i haven't been in a race in quite a while um so for me it evoked like that high school feeling the idea was sort of inspired by those classic sort of high school nostalgic movies like 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 Juno. Juno's a, I mean Juno's definitely Juno primary. Juno was a huge one for you. Yeah, for say. my character. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um I was definitely trying to give some Michael Cera. Um and and in addition like a sort of uh campy flatness like um Wes Anderson. In terms of characters, you know, the the characters were largely come up with like in detail by the actors who played them um me and, and anthony we would have meetings and discuss like what kind of stereotype archetypes uh, <laughs> the, on this list it's like it's like jock goth unibrow <laughs> <laughs> the girl boss girl boss um greaser greaser yeah. cool kid cool girl when we were like developing these like costumes and set stuff like i was giving you my ideas but what were you using to guide you into like actually making it happen so when you brought up your character i definitely 
resonated with the whole Juno thing. I was like, we're definitely pulling off like a Michael Sarah like type mm-hmm. situation for you. I think when we started fleshing out each character, I was also thinking about who can really rock like these fits. Like Emily being like a greaser, that was like my my thing for her. I was like, you're gonna look like you just came out of a freaking grease movie. With Ryan, fun fact, he wore the same like jock jacket that Franco did in Kid with the Dream promo. But yeah, I think with each character, I was just like, how like even the unibrow on 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 K two five. But to you, what who is K two five? Um, I saw Brandon really made that character. Honestly, like we went thrifting together, and once he saw that jacket, he's like. I'm thinking maybe very like foreign exchange student, like little Russian, a little scary, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that sounds about right. Yeah. And I feel like he could portray that character very well. And he did. Yeah. Oh, he did. <laughs> so we got to Maine, you know, a few days before the shoot was going to happen. And what was it like setting up for, you know, this one day, like five different location shoot? I think I was thinking of how everything would work and how they would complement each other. Um, I feel like your your idea was like, I really want this big sign. I think that was like one of your biggest things. That I was want a my big one. Sign. Like I was like, I need a big giant sign. I remember freaking out about the sign too, like for like the full month before heading up being like, how are we going to make this sign happen? Like we're yeah. not thinking about the sign. <laughs> um, and as it turns out, it was like, actually quite easy yeah Yeah. it's quite easy and quite manageable and besides it falling with the wind every two seconds yeah yeah it did do that (laughs) but um but yeah and and it looked so great and i feel like and i and i i do think it was exactly it's amazing i it means it's amazing how just like a sign can literally give the whole world like it you know like one strong set element yeah can tell you everything you need to know about the world that they're in you know what Mm. i mean well my question for you is i know you did like a lot of location scouting how did that kind of go about with andrew yeah um andrew andrew simon um head of barn arts um in maine um is acadia national park uh master you know because he he lives there and, and he also knows so many people who um who live there too and so it was a lot of uh conversing with locals um andrew just like figuring out um what everyone was thinking about i would describe in in as much detail as i could and pull up reference images of what kind of um location i wanted for each spot and then you know he would just sort of talk to people um and then the day before it was like me Andrew, Anthony were just in the car driving all around Maine, looking at spots, saying like, "Mm, not this one, maybe this one. And Mm. and like finding spots that were like, maybe this is it. And then like trying to adjust our vision a little bit to make the location fit the idea more Um, and really just adventuring all around Maine. Hello, Mr. Joe King. (sighs) Mr. Anthony Alvarez. Pleasure sitting across from you again. Always. I first off, I want to say that Everything we do together always ends up being one of my favorite projects and and you truly are a master at your craft and I just wanted to say publicly thank you for what you're doing, being able to to teach me and being a great support being on set. We've worked together on a bunch of projects. Uh, I would love to hear what it was like for you being the cinematographer behind Last Place, what it was like capturing these shots. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of those shots were the f- the first time that I've ever done anything. Like I th- I want to say honestly all of it. The way that we this is the, our first time utilizing two cameras with uh, on different rigs, and then having to decipher based off of the ideas that you and Laura had which configuration of camera should we use to like convey this vision. I would say like my top shots would be the anything with me in the canoe like in the water <laughs> any of those um i actually really like the one of uh of uh michael jumping like diving and like oh, yeah. doing Beautiful a little shot. uh pan and then uh all of the whip pans to the characters oh yeah, yeah that was a pretty fun one were there any moments that you sort of felt any fear for the camera itself or like for for the because we were in some pretty like treacherous environments like we were on rocks we were in forests we were uh putting like we were driving 
with the camera hanging out the back yeah, of the car. We, we were on were water. Definitely in danger a lot. <laughs> yeah, that that driving shot with Laura on the bike that was definitely uh, dangerous. There was a time when Frank was behind the wheel and we were That's like, "All right, slow down, slow down." slow down and he just slammed on the brakes and like i felt i fell out of it and ran over like a cup and whatever it was just bro i don't do you remember what happened to my bottle my like yeah. solid metal bottle and yeah. what he did to crushed. it crushed that could have been our heads yeah it could have been when we were doing the drone stuff in the forest i was very scared that i was gonna hit a branch but little do we know a couple hours later we'll tell them what what that was yeah what okay well was. so we had to we did a a second day of shooting where we went, we wanted to get some shots that we weren't able to get the first time because of time and waves, AKA David, he, we always see him take the drone out of the air with like this super cool trick where he just like goes like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember being like, Oh, I guess I could, anyone could do that then. So, and we were, we were planning on doing that because the rocks, like there, there wasn't yeah. any like flat ground. Yeah. Like it was like, there's it. the only way to get this drone out of the air the, to grab it out the yeah. air. So we're like, okay, cool. And I remember grabbing it and turning it upside down and being like, Joe, Joe, this thing is not turning off, not turning off. And me just like, honestly panicking, but I knew like, if I let that go, that was going to fly into the rocks or fly into the lake. And I'm like, this is too expensive for us to me even risk that. So I just kept holding on to it. Honestly, I, I felt it hitting my finger, but I wasn't like, I, I was like, I'm not screaming. Like it wasn't bleeding that much, yeah, a little bit. but like 10 it. seconds after it stopped, I finally looked yeah, at the underside of my hand no, and I'm I like, oh, that. that's a really, really bad cut. Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I'm okay. Oh my God. Oh, that actually looks kind of bad. Yeah, I will say like, there was like a lot of... <laughs> a lot of things that happened on set that mm -hmm. sort of like I, we could have probably avoided. Uh, but I will say that at least for me personally, every part of the production, like I felt more and more grateful. Like when the lens went in the water, I'm like, mm -hmm. that's a lens gone. Something about that having happened and seeing that we were just like, all right, let's move forward. Like, let's mm -hmm. like, let's just work with what we have. Still got work to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, it made me so like, grounded in the enjoyment of the process and not getting caught up on like hiccups and just keep creating and with this group of people because it wasn't just us it was like a whole like a whole group of with the actors and the mm -hmm. team that it's like it's not just about one thing happening or one person it's like it's a whole group and we have to keep moving together and i felt mm -hmm. very grateful that no matter what happened i was like I'm still having a lot of fun doing this because I'm making a, something that I feel is going to be beautiful with mm -hmm. an amazing group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was a good one. And what, what was cool about this this uh, this shoot was I think we were all so focused. It, it was so fun to be focused that way, you know, and, and to have so many people like have one common goal common goal yeah. and be excited about it yeah. you know what i mean yeah, and i feel like something an example of that that i feel like was really just really exciting how it happened was um so and we'll talk about this in post-production as well but um as you guys know k25 at some point he he's disappeared mm -hmm. by raven and that wasn't initially part of the play of mm -hmm. the of the video like he was going to finish the race yeah but while we were shooting he ended up like like an old injury of his ended up you know kicking up again and he was like i can't finish this like i mm -hmm. and we were like okay so we have to basically remove the character of k25 um and i feel like that that was like something that came out of nowhere mm -hmm. they were like okay we have to completely change this whole character's arc but i feel like we were focused enough that we were able to come up with solutions but we it was like a fun time coming like we were getting all creative like what if mm -hmm. he like was shot up into the air like in super smash bros yeah, like what yeah. if he snapped his leg and he couldn't finish a race which we have footage of mm -hmm. uh and yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> which is great <laughs> footage yeah great footage it yeah. also looks so real when he when, yeah, when, when he it happens yeah. yeah but i feel like that that's a perfect example of like that focus uh -huh. but and like that common goal like we were trying to tell this story mm -hmm. and but doing it in a way that we just had fun the whole time mm -hmm. and then ended up being better than if he would have finished the race to be yeah, honest yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there was a uh one of the shots that you and laura got i don't know if that if that was a plan from the beginning or if that was something like oh we have a gopro let's do it but the one with uh laura carrying the bike and the gopros right there yeah i, I remember like thinking about the 
what I because I knew that I was going to be editing and like what I wanted to look like. And I wanted there to be like we had these idea of these shots that were like inspired by like Wes Anderson and that sort of like um, composition. But I knew that I wanted there to be points of like where we sort of like surprised the viewer with the type of shot um, that we showed. And I felt like the GoPro not only has this like really wide angle that, you know, juxtaposed to all these other shots, like, you know, with a, uh, with the change in depth of field and the change of the angle um, would pop out. But it also is so versatile. Like it, yeah. you can put, the, we were able to put the GoPro on the bike and lower the trooper because I was like, can you hold this bike and hold this camera up here and, and like, perform. and perform? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I can do it. And she did it. And she did an amazing job. Yeah. And then on, and then in the water, like it being like, I just love how versatile that camera is. Mm -hmm. And it's like accessible. Like it, it really, for me, I wanted to use it also because I want people to see that you can capture some really powerful things and you don't need a like the nice EOS camera. R's that we have. Yeah. You don't need like a super expensive camera. Like it's, it's really kind of like the intention and the creativity behind the shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will say, I mean, for the entire team, like, I mean, I, I definitely played a part in, in capturing it, but I think if it wasn't for you, Sarah and, and Laura, like coming up with the whole concept in this world and like all these small details for all these characters, I don't think it would have been as as great as it was. So like great job to everyone. Thank you, man. The and, and the actors, too. Like I, yeah. we really cannot stress like how much every single actor from the the racers to the referees like the coaches like yeah. mackie and andrew, and andrew yeah, they um, it. yeah they really like took their characters fleshed them out had conversations yeah. with each other like how they'd interact mm -hmm. and and it like you end up seeing characters that even if you see the music video you don't know their whole background like there is like a background to them like there yeah. is this like how would this character be in school right sitting down at lunch with the other ones and i felt like that was that coming out so well was because that they really committed to it and they Absolutely were like we're gonna take this seriously one, yeah. yeah and and uh uh fran like really committing to raven yeah. and like the whole <laughs> like that she did an like amazing all job. of her faces her movements was all her we were just like just do some witchy stuff and yeah. she's like i got it you know like that that shot of her like doing the hex on brandon that was a one take oh we my didn't God, do yeah. anything else that was the one shot we were like bro we got it yeah we literally should not yeah. do anymore because that was perfect yeah literally perfect but yeah. also i mean that combined with you moving the camera like it's mm. it, that was actually something that i felt like in this production you did which was like created almost like this specific type of shot of like or like style where like you'd be going over their shoulders while they're rushing mm -hmm. in like the opposite direction mm -hmm. and i felt like you did that like three times mm -hmm. one with the bikes two in the forest and then three when they were like at the end of the race mm -hmm. and i felt like that sort of like seeing a similar technique but done in three different settings with the characters mm -hmm. i felt like that c continued to add to this sort of like storyline you know what i mean yeah absolutely to have familiar like moments so exactly. that it's not so it's not just a bunch of random shit right happening. exactly yeah. and and they have purpose too like the reason why i did that was one to make it seem like they're moving faster two to get through them like quicker because we needed to see all of them but also just like that that the that push and pull type of feel you know what i mean it, it was just a little more dynamic for me yeah, um, man. in that moment so i'm glad you recognized that you did an amazing yeah. job man it was Thank an you. absolute pleasure so creating this with you man Absolutely. i'm excited to see what we do this year bro. yeah me too man Thank all right you, i'm out of here peace i don't know if you know this i don't know if i told you this but this was the first project that i had ever like edited that i did with someone else it's all editing for me is almost always a very solitary thing and not that i mind that but I always do it on my own and I'll send it to people for like feedback and their thoughts. But it was the first time that I was like, let's plan getting together frequently and having conversations and watching it over and giving feedback and applying it in real time and mm. showing it to you. Like that was the first time I'd ever done that. Um, and it was pretty awesome. Like I felt like I learned a lot, but I want to ask you like, what was that like for you sort of being there in the editing studio um, and seeing it come together sort of like in real time in front of you and being able to provide feedback. I mean, it was a huge gift that you allowed me to do that. Um, My pleasure. Because um, I I think what I found is that editing is much, very, very much like mixing um, in the music world, you know? And um, if you're an artist who cares a lot about the final product, then having some say in in the mixing slash editing stage is sort of huge in understanding in, 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 in understanding how it ends up, you know, and, and having a say in how it ends up. And it was, it was really, really fun because 
I I loved just like looking through all the shots we had and and talking through you know I think my my brain works best when I get to zoom in on the details and um that's why I was so happy that you let me be part of the editing because editing is all about details it's all about the the specific second the millisecond that you cut to another shot I just felt very comfortable editing with you because I think you understood what I was trying to get at but you understood like how to actually make it happen you know for me like your eye for detail I felt like made me a better editor because I would put something together or like a sequence of shots I'd show it to you and you'd be like oh that's awesome that looks great like what if like we like actually did this like two frames like just like a, a half a second more and it was like very very specific like super specific but it was so like I would hear it and I would do it and I would look at them like, yeah, that feels a lot better. Like, mm. I feel like my sense of and you spoke throughout the process of like, yeah, this is kind of like mixing. Like you would say that. And I could see you're like, I know you say that you're a novice, but like you have a natural sense of pacing, which I feel like comes from your background as, as a musician. And it was actually I felt like I was absorbing that editing with you. And I felt myself get better and better in terms of like storytelling and how like the timing of everything because of the direction that you would give me. Mm. And I felt like something we both did really well was like checking our ego at the door and really like coming together to make this and not being like, OK, this is going to be my way because I want it like this. Like I felt like there was a very balanced relationship of, of giving and taking when it came to the final product as you recall when uh when we were shooting brandon aka k25 got injured halfway through the production and we were like kind of like in a rush that day that we were like okay let's just like disappear him <laughs> like we make you just kind not like kill him off like leave room for you know for improvisation mm -hmm. uh, we but we didn't really know for sure what it was going to look like, how we were going to bring him back, what was going to happen until like, honestly, months later. Um, I would love to hear what your thinking was like for that whole process. And how did you end up feeling when you saw the after credit scene? So, I mean, on the day of, you know, when Brandon unfortunately got injured, it was sort of like, it was one of those moments of like, okay, what do we do? It's like, we had so many things we had to get done. Um, and I remember like thinking back on this like old phrase that I had growing up. All my needs will always be supplied by my understanding of creativity. Mm -hmm. And on that day, um, the way I understood my creativity is I was like, like I remember you pitching me this this Mario. <laughs> and, like, and I was like, Smash Bros. I was like, okay, okay. You're very good at holding space for ideas. Like I could see when I'm like, she doesn't love it, but she's exploring it. Like she's not it. just saying like no straight up. She's like. Okay, I was really trying like, to consider. Yeah. I was like, what would that mean? And I was like, let's just, you know, and we ended up just being like, let's just get that shot of Brandon disappearing. Mm -hmm. um, and for many, many months after the shoot, it was sort of like, yeah, I, I mean, what are we going to do? We had this idea of like um, K25 appearing in like the subway system. Yeah. And like, that's where he like uh, operates to. Um, and that was like kind of the plan for a while. Yeah. And then um, Brandon was growing out his beard and his yeah. hair. And um, yeah. that just didn't seem like a feasible option anymore. Um, and I remember you being like, yeah, we're, we're going to film what it is tomorrow. And I was like, okay. This was like a week before the video came out. And I was like, okay. Um, and I, and I, for whatever reason, I was like, I'm not going to ask any questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let it happen. I'm gonna let whatever it is that happens. I remember you saying me like, "We have an idea. We have an idea," and I was like, <laughs> "Okay." And we came up with what we see now. And I remember saying like, "Oh, but we have. To, I have to get like Laura on board because it's pretty out there. It's pretty like uh, like absurd." He was like, "Don't tell Laura. <laughs> just he was like, just shoot it. And if we don't use it, if she doesn't like it, that's cool. It's worth capturing anyway. And if she likes it, cool. But if you just describe it to her." she's not gonna like she may not see it i had trust i had trust um and ultimately sometimes still i i do see that post credit scene and i'm like i'm still not sure how like well, how <laughs> this may like i some of the dots are not connected for me but it just i can't, I can't explain enough that it literally doesn't matter at all because it's so i mean absurd it's so absurd and and it is and when you showed it to me like it was really like the hardest I had laughed in in months. I feel like that it's just absurd enough for you to be like, "What just happened?" But within the realm of like, I think I, I understand. Can, I mean, what like happened. I have I have my theories. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I think that's awesome that it's like 
it's like leaves enough room for people to be like, I think this is what happened. And, and I'm curious to the different storylines, yeah. the different like, you know, um, like what is this? Pe- what happened in between? That yeah. Where is he? And, yeah. 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 But I understood that final moment to be like, this is my best guess for what this. I would love is. to hear it. Is that it's like um, K25 gets sort of sent into a cold, um, you know, blizzard like future um, where um, he has lost a lot of memories about <laughs> what happened to him. Um, and he doesn't understand the circumstances because he never sees um, Fran go. Yeah, like, he, he never just sees disappears. Raven yeah. go like this. He just disappears. So I imagine he gets sent into this other world, ages, you know, 10 years, and <laughs> spends all these 10 years trying to be like, how did I leave, you know, this race and end up in this, you know, almost Russian, like, you know, world. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that he is literally trying to piece together what happened. How he gets these images. Yeah, that's where... <laughs> that's where I... So, I, but I, I mean, maybe he sees the last place music video, <laughs> yeah, and um, and then screenshots it, prints this stuff out, and it's just trying to connect the dots. Like, who is it that? How did he get sent back? How did he? How did all of this happen to yeah. him? Like, I have my own theory, and it's not for sure that's what happened. Like, yeah. the way I view it is like this character ended up in like some kind of like purgatory, like in between <laughs> life or death, and like it's like he just has memories that sort of manifest in these physical things and like this is more it's not so much that he has a physical corkboard but this represents like the the insanity that he's feeling mm. like i have no idea what the hell's going on yeah and so it's just like it's it's truly a shit show on a board but that represents him and you know? i mean also like we're just spitballing here now <laughs> um i also feel like there's an the fact that it's me who he you know <laughs> He like he was like this yeah. is the center of everything. I, I feel like it also reminds me that like not to like zoom all the way out, but that last place the video is is an allegory for like what people will do for love and like the mm. the stakes and like there is a I think a a a, a, a hypo- like a theory of this video that could be like Laura set this whole thing up. You know what I mean, Laura. Yeah. I mean, and, and that is kind of what the song is about, right? Is that Laura enters races that she doesn't need to run. Yeah. Um, and Laura creates situations that are complicated because she just likes to do a challenge. Yeah. You know what Th- I mean? There's like a big like main character sort of syndrome that I see in the character. And I say the character of Laura, like not you. I mean, but no, this listen, I, I, I have some main character <laughs> syndrome too. Yeah. Of course, well, and of I course. think like it, it like if that was captured well in like certain like that shot when you're like singing into the into mm-hmm. the camera when the race starts. But everyone is like hardcore racing mm-hmm. like that to me sums up that the, this character in i mean everyone is the main character of their own story but it's like this world really like seems to gravitate around this character it, it almost seems more like a fantasy that laura makes up in her head yes. that she sits mm-hmm. on and that i guess and k25 is, is victim to yeah, you know what I mean? yeah like you really got trapped in your mind yeah, somewhere. yeah yeah he got trapped what would be the biggest thing that you learned i think the biggest thing i learned was For a while, I didn't think the video was going to happen at all, you know? Um, And then I reached out to you. (laughs) And then it all happened, you know? I think it was sort of like... It feels like it came out of thin air almost. um, Because it was such a huge idea that, like, I didn't know how it would ever get done. Um, I I think it was a lesson for me in, like... um, Find those people in your life that, like, say, like, I... I, I'm interested in what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm want to work with you and believe them, you know? Um, cause I think especially like artists just tend to be super, um, self-sabotaging a lot of the yeah. time and think like, man, it's just me. And like, how am I going to get these projects done? But if you're being, you know, sincere and making your work and, um, meeting good people, like other people are really interested in being a part of that. Um, and, and like, genuine care and love and 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 like i don't know i I felt like the project was more like a uh it felt like a like a project i understand exactly what what you're saying yeah it it was like it it truly felt like something like like a journey that was written almost and like we were like we were like these characters that started off as like strangers and the inciting incident is you getting your heart broken and you make this this song that brings us together in real life and and i remember when i first heard last place i was 
in love with like i was obsessed with with the song from the beginning and i remember like sending it to the team like guys listen to this song let's have her on revival which was like the first time we, we worked together um and i just remember like being such a fan and then you reaching out about the video and i was like one thousand percent we're doing this i don't care how yeah. we do it but i i i'm happy that you feel that that's your takeaway because for me i would say it's pretty much the same exact thing it's like there is a um there is like a beautiful sort of journey that can happen when you like open yourself up to the things that are out of your control which Mm -hmm. includes the people in our life you know and i think that when you have a a a certain amount of faith and trust for for people the right people Mm -hmm. um and when you come together like truly magical and powerful things can happen and like you can do more you can do more than you can really imagine when you have sort of like a shared group of people with shared values yeah. um, and commitment to creating art that isn't just really exciting and like captivating, but also true like to their own individual experience. Like something about when things come from a very personal place, mm. even though it's your experience, like it when it's so pure and it comes out in the world, like other people can connect with it as well because they feel, at least in the way I view, like you could feel the humanity in it. Mm. And I think that is like a really powerful driving factor for the for the video and for all the shit that we do together to be honest yeah would you say that's what was your biggest takeaway yes it was definitely like my biggest takeaway without a doubt was that a group a community a team of committed talented individuals can really do more and go further than we can as individuals and i think that similar to what you said like being an artist a lot of times you can we self-sabotage or we sort of like create these reasons why one we have to do it on our own and then two why it's so hard and impossible to do it on our own Mm -hmm. and i feel like that this was proof that you don't have to do it on your own you can find people that you can create with and it could be beautiful what you create with each other and i feel really blessed i've learned that on this you you know you took this idea and like every step of the way you really like took ownership of your idea in a way that was inclusive and collaborative, but also like never forgetting yourself and your own like responsibility to your own art. And it was, I learned so much working alongside of you and I really, I'm excited for everything we have yet to do with each other. Yeah, me too, dude. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Can I please have silence for 30 seconds? (laughs)